Yes, you can stop HackerLoy from gaining access into your websites or web application service by using AWS Web Application Firewall or short form for AWS WAF. So whether you're trying to stop a hacker or whether you are trying to learn about cloud security, this is going to be the video where we'll deep dive on the ways hackers utilize different type of hacking techniques to gain access into your server. And at the same time, we'll learn about the rules that we can create as part of inspecting all these different type of threats that are coming into the environment and stopping them, be able to understand and analyze them, and then be able to block out all these hackers from gaining unauthorized access into your site. And you would have learned from this channel about SQL injection, cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, and all these are different type of risks that your application is going to face the moment they're open up to the internet. So we'll learn exactly what we can do to defend against these type of threats. So before we get started, smash the like button, turn on notifications so that you don't get hacked. And yes, that's right. You got to learn about AWS security right now. This is because everyone is moving to the cloud. And with the cloud, you can quickly instantiate resources in seconds, like you could literally open up a Kali Linux server onto AWS in seconds. And after which you can remotely connect to it and start running all this ethical hacking, penetration testing within AWS. So in terms of architecture, this is how it's going to look like. So first of all, you have what we call the internet, right? So this is going to be the place, all the location where anyone will be able to access into your app. And the second part of all, you have what we call the application load balancer. So I'm going to put this here as ALB. So this is where we can route different types of requests to different types of backend resources that you have and in this case we are going to have something called an ec2 which is a virtual server for us all right so here we have a virtual server so this ultimately allows us the ability to send traffic from the internet to the application load balancer and then target it towards the ec2 instance so this gives us the ability to have those traffic access back into the web server and then after which we'll be able to access into the site so what you don't believe this is going to be the architecture so well let me show you just that so right in front of us i am on our aws console so in this case we have the following all right so you have the instance summary so here in this case we have a wordpress ec2 virtual server that's running on linux and we have of course like the for example the public ip address and of course in this case we also have an application load balancer and you can easily find this likewise under the ec2 service and on the left side you can see the following over here right so we have the load balancer so go ahead and just click onto it so once you click onto the load balancer you can see that we have the following load balancer right here okay so this is the dns name right so the dns name will be the target all right so in this case for the dns name all right we will be associating this application load balancer to a aws WAF web access control list so that we can begin the protection of this application load balancer so what you can see here right now is that if i jump over all right, we can see the listeners. All right, so in this case, we have port 80. And of course, at the same time, we have monitoring. That is, you can see all the responses, the requests that are coming in. So all these are directly from my own access into the site. All right. And of course, at the same time, you can go ahead and click on the target groups. And in target groups, you can see the following over here. We have a WordPress group. You can select onto it and you can see the targets. So in this case, we have the target of the instance. All right. So you can see the instance ID over here. And that will bring us back over to the virtual server that I've shown you earlier. All right. And you can see the health status. So in this case, we have the health status of healthy. So we are able to, from the application load balancer, connect over into the EC2 virtual server. So right in front of us, we have AWS WAF. All right. So from AWS WAF, you can see all of the major features that's available for us. So here we have web access control list, we have bot control, we have application integration via software development kits, IP addresses or IP sets, regular expression pattern set, rule groups, and marketplace where you can access into some of these managed rules for you so you don't have to build them yourself, especially if time is of essence and you want to quickly outsource some of the defenses over into perhaps some of these managed rules that we'll explain in a brief moment. Okay, so now you probably have a question like, what's the difference between an on-premise web application firewall as well as the one that's available on AWS Web as a cloud-native web application firewall? Well, here's the really beautiful part about AWS AWS WAF, all right? There's several things we can think about when using AWS Cloud Native WAF, all right? So the beauty of this is that we are able to scale as we grow, all right? So here again, we have the internet, the internet where hackers, where good guys and bad guys can both access into your resources. And of course, right in the middle, it could be your application load balancer. So in this case, I'm putting ALB. And of course, ultimately on the right side, we have EC2 instances. So you can, you can have multiple of this, all right? So you could have multiple servers running so that you can then be able to scale your workload as all 
this traffic comes in and as more demand comes in, you'll be able to then surf or right, multiple of this request over into several of these EC2 instances. All these are the traffic that are coming in. Okay. And the beauty of this now is that you can have AWS WAF over here. All right. So you have WAF and you can now directly associate it into the ALB without having to change any of the routing configuration, having to change anything on your application end, because all these are integrated directly in the cloud so that you can save a lot of time and you can scale the protection depending on the demand that is coming in to different parts of your site. So the first thing you want to use is, of course, on web access control list. So once you click onto it, do note that WAF is a regional service. So you have to go to where the region of your application load balancer, or perhaps in this case, you could have a content delivery or distribution network called CloudFront. And in that case, you want to select on the global CloudFront in order to have those web access control lists be able to be associated with the specific resources so that you can begin the protection of them. So right in front of us, I've created a WordPress access control list. So in this case, you already know what's behind in terms of the ECTU virtual server that I run and is running, of course, on WordPress as a content management system. And you can have multiple web access control lists to be associated with the different type of resources that you have. And specifically, a lot of the times, you have to have a web access control list that is targeted towards a specific application. However, there could be cases where you have applications that are fairly similar and that they are also, in this case, all right, using, say, WordPress as a content management system, then yes, you could possibly have web access control lists associated with multiple of these different resources. So in this case, I'm going to show you how you can easily create a web access control list by clicking on Create Web ACL. And right here, you can give it a name. So in this case, I can enter, say, for example, Prod Web ACL. All right, so this could be one of the name for it. And the good part is you get CloudWatch metric name for it. Okay, so in this case, it means that anytime certain specific rules get triggered, all right, you can get a notification by having, say, specific alarms being tied to sort of metrics that you have created. And then here in this case, all right, what is the type of resource that we want to associate with this web access control list? So we have several options for us. In fact, four options available. One is CloudFront distributions. Number two are regional resources like application load balancer, application programming interface gateway, as well as AWS App Sync. And of course, the region that you're operating on and the resources that you want to add to be associated. Okay, so go ahead and click under next. And once you're done over here, you can see the following. All these rules that you want to create to be part of the web access control list, and you can edit and update them later on, even after the web ACL has been created. Okay, so there are two main type of rules that we can look at. One are what we call manage rule groups. All right, so this are rules where you can subscribe to, and then after which all those protection will come into place, and you will be able to defend your applications using those rules that are managed for you. So you don't have to worry about the text transformation, the type of signatures you're looking for in order to protect it. The second part of all is add my own rules and rule groups. So this is the part where you can create your own conditional statements, your inspection rules, and then be able to define what actions you want to take as well in order to be able to have those protection being placed against those resources. The other part you want to look at is in terms of the rule capacity, right? The rule capacity state that if you have multiple condition statements, you cannot exceed 1,500 web capacity unit. The reason is because it does require compute in order to go through the inspection rule. So that's why for each the web access control list, you're under 1,500 web capacity unit. And then finally, in terms of the rest of it, right, you have the default web ACL action for request and don't match any rules. So in this case, we have a default action of allow. And there's another option available for us. All right, so here we have one is allow and number two, which is on block. So what's the difference between specifying a default action as allow and default action as a block. So where should you allow? So if you're using allow as the default action, then what you want to do then is to think about, all right, what are the bad payloads that can be coming in? Say, for example, your SQL injection, where hackers are trying to gain access into your backend resources, as well as, say, for example, your cross-site scripting, all right, where hackers are trying to inject their own script into your site. All right, so in that case, if we don't find a match, then we allow, all right, meaning that the request will now be allowed to gain access into the backend resources. For the other example, all right, if in this case, all right, you have an expected payload to come in, say, for example, you have a product ID from 1 to 99, and if it matches, then yes, all right, the rule will then allow this specific request to go through. However, if it does not, then it's going to default to block, blocking those requests because someone decided to send, say, 101 as a product ID, 102 as a product ID, which is outside of your range. So in this case, we are going to inspect for bad malicious payload that's coming in. So and then after which, if it doesn't match, then yes, we are going to allow the default action to allow. Right. And likewise, we have the custom requests 
option available. All right. So in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to add X A M Z N dash W A M dash. All right. So this allow us to add additional headers as part of a request. So now with that, let's go ahead and click on the next. And then, of course, in this case, we can set root priorities, which one is going to be inspected first, second, third, and so on. So depending on the priority of it, you can set those rules. So let's go ahead and click next on this. So what we are doing here is quickly creating all right, several of these types of web access control lists. And in this case, we can also have sample requests coming in. So we can click on next. And then, of course, you can review and then create the web ACL. So pretty easy in terms of creating web access control lists. So what I have done here is you can see the following. You successfully created a web ACL, prod web ACL. And what we're going to do now is go ahead and take a look at, say, WordPress ACL. All right, so let's go ahead and click on it. And once you clicked on it over here, you can see the following tabs. All right, so we have overview, rules, bot control, associated AWS resources, custom response, logging metrics, as well as CloudWatch Lock Insights. So if you're sending your locks over to CloudWatch, then you can actually enable CloudWatch Lock Insights to be available and accessible directly from the web access control list. So right here, you can see the following. We have requests per five minute period, and we can see the following, all right? All these are the requests that are coming into your server, all right? And you can see which one of them are allowed, which one of them are actually getting blocked, which of these rules have been triggered. And as you scroll down further, you can also have sample requests that are coming in to see what are some of the different accesses that are going in to the site. Of course, in this case, you can see that there is someone coming from a source IP from Singapore. So yes, I'm located out of Singapore, and you're able to see that IP address over here. So you can go ahead and click under the URI path. So click on it, and you will see the following. Sample requests. All right, so these are not all the requests that are coming in, okay? So we can see, for example, get host, user agent, we can see all these different header values. So you can do your analysis, looking up for specific type of bad payloads that may be hitting into your application load balancer in this case, okay? And likewise, we could possibly look at some of the blocked up requests that are hitting our resources so that we can investigate, all right, what are these threat actors trying to do with our resources? And right here, all right, as I scroll up further, this is going to be the main part of things. So under the rules, so all these are the rules that you can easily add into your web access control list. All right, so all you got to do in this case, you can say, for example, click under add rules and you have two options available. Either you manage rule groups or your own rules and rule groups that you want to craft. So your conditional statements, your checks. So let's go ahead and click under add manage rule groups, okay? So here, in this case, we have several options available for us. And since this is also highlighted, I just want to address this a little earlier. All right, so this part meant that we can inspect the body of the request. So as the request is coming in, we can inspect up to eight kilobyte of the body request, okay? So if you're expecting a slightly bigger payload, maybe it is in a JSON format, all right, you are able to look into those request body, okay? And then what you cannot see though is under the logging part of it because request body can be fairly huge. So if you have multiple requests, millions of requests per day, chances are the request body is going to add up significantly over time to your logs, okay? So inspection, yes. Logging for AWS WAF, the answer is no. Moving forward, you can see here we have AWS Managed Root Groups. So there are two components or two segments to it. All right, one are what we call the pay root groups. All right, so this is where you can take a look at someone trying to do an account takeover inside your site. So you can easily click onto this to enable it into the web access control list. The second part, you can look at bot control. So there are two types of bots, the bad bots as well as the good bots. So in this case, we can quickly block away those bad bots who can be consuming excessively on your resources and then not giving legitimate users the ability to access your resources. So you can quickly block out those bad bots that could be trying to download your site. They could be trying to crawl into your site, finding different types of directories and so on. Next up are what we call the free rule groups. All right, so in this case, we can have admin protection, right? So if you know there are certain admin pages for your site, we have reputation lists from Amazon, we have anonymous IP lists, so people who are coming in from VPN, proxy, Tor nodes, and all of this, we can very quickly be able to block them out. All right, core rule set is where you're trying to associate the protection against those that are described in open web application security project publications. So in terms of the top 10, all right, so there's a new publication about three or four months back. And that's something really interesting to take a look at, especially if you are an application developer or you are part of infrastructure team, the security team, and you want to protect your applications. You want to have those security controls that are mapped back to the top 10 risks on OWASP. Known bad inputs, Linux operating system, 
All right, SQL database and WordPress application if you're running WordPress on the back end. So let's go ahead and enable, say, for example, in this case, we can have SQL database. All right, so once you enable it, you can click under Edit. And from Edit, you can see the capacity all right, that will be consumed. And you have versioning enabled. All right, so, so you have versions available for it. And you can easily select all right, a subscription to a simple notification service so that from here, you'll be able to get notified. So whenever new versions are available, you can get a notification for it. And as you scroll down further, all right, these are the rules that are going to be checked as a result of turning on SQL injection managed rules. So in this case, all right, we can have query arguments check, body check, cookie, URI path, and there's one part of it called the rule action. So what exactly is the rule action trying to do? So what it is going to do is to block any time it detects any of this all right, within the request. And of course, at the same time, you can also have scope down statement so scope down statement enable and give us the ability all right to specify where exactly you could be capturing those sql requests coming in and you want to block and stop those type of sql injection that are coming in into your site all right and finally you can easily do a overwrite of the entire rule group by selecting over here to count okay so once you are done with this you can very quickly enter safe rule and once you have selected on the safe rule and it's now being added all right into the web access control list so you can see right here changes saved successfully and if you scroll down further all right you can click add rules and once you're done with this as we move back over into the web access control list you can see right here okay we have the capacity and we have the checks and it can select under say in this case aws dash aws manage rules sql i rule set i can move it up and i can click save on this all right so once we are done with this we can see the rule actions for it all right so very quickly we're now deploying a sql injection rule set to block sql injection from coming in so moving to the second part which is something a little more complex is under your my own rules and rule group so go ahead and click on it and once you clicked on it over here, you have three options available, right? The first option is called IP set, right? So IP set gives us the ability to specify IP addresses that you want to block or allow. OK, so in this case, if you create an IP set, all right, you will see the IP set listed on the bottom. OK, so here on the left side, you can go ahead and click under IP sets and you can go over into, say, AWS WAF. So in this case, I can go ahead and click on the create IP set. And once I click on the create IP set, we can specify a name so I can enter, say, approved ip address okay and then once you're done with that you have the region you have the ipv4 version okay so in this case if i was to jump back to aws WAF, all right of course if i go over into the web access control list and if i was to look at all the requests that are coming in it's coming from a specific ip address and that ip address is my home network so this is the ip address that i want to allow access into all right the resource so in this case i can go ahead under wordpress acl i can look at the sample request and i can easily copy the all right, IP address over here. So I can go ahead and copy this. We go back to the IP set we're creating under slash 32, all right, to target this IP address. So we can have CIDR range for this, all right, classes into domain range. Click under create IP set. And that's it, we're done. All right, we just created an IP set and we're going to use this as part of only allowing this IP address to be able to interact with our resources. So going back, all right, into the AWS WAF, the bottom, all right, so then we can determine whether we want to allow, all right, the action to be allow or block account. So there are two options available, again, in terms of IP set. And one is usually, generally, the bad IPs, all right? So you subscribe to certain thread intel, and your thread intel feeds are telling you all these bad IPs. And of course, they are continuously being refreshed, and you can inject them over into the bad IP set over in AWS WAF so that you can begin blocking down all these bad IPs before they even have an opportunity to interact with any of your resources. And of course, the next use case is in terms of good IPs. All right, good IPs meaning that they could be your partner servers, all right, and you want them to be able to communicate with your resources, then you want to put them under, say, the good IP set. So these are the two general use cases when it comes to using IP set as part of AWS WAF. So in this case, I can very quickly enter the following, good IP, all right? So what I can do now is I can choose the IP set, approve IP, all right? So in this case, I'm going to put an allow for this, okay? So once I'm done with that, I can click add rule, all right, and this rule will very quickly be added into the web access control list. And then after which, we can set the rule priority for it. So in this case, perhaps I want to say that anytime 
I have a good IP match immediately. I will allow the request to go through. All right. So this is something that we can do very quickly with AWS WAF to say that good IPs, you can immediately go into accessing those resources without having to go through any further checks. So go ahead and click save on this. All right. So now we have set the root priority so we can jump back into the rules of WordPress access control list. And in this case, I can click under again. All right. At my own rules and rule groups. The second part is called the rule builder. The rule builder is where you're writing down your condition statements, your checks against different type of requests, payloads are coming in. So in this case, so for example, I can enter the name. So we could be looking out for SQL injection coming in to say user agent. So I can enter SQL I user agent. It's a regular rule. So we have two rule options. One is regular rule, which are all your condition statements to check different headers, looking out for different type of match conditions and all of that. The second one is what we call the rate based rule. The rate based rule allow us to determine what is considered as excessive requests going into your service or services. So in that case, all right, your rate based rule allow you the ability to begin blocking those IP addresses which are having or hitting the threshold of the number of requests over into your server. So this could be a part of a distributed denial of service attack where they're trying to flood your entire server and your services. So what exactly is a distributed denial of service attack? So in this case, you have a hacker on the top left corner right over here, right? So you can see the hacker. And what they do is that they would then send a lot of traffic over through to the internet, hitting into the application load balancer. And then after which, this could consume legitimate resources coming in from your EC2 resources or your virtual service. As a result of that, all right, an actual normal user is no longer able to access into your traffic. And this consumes all of your resources. So in order to defend against this type of attacks, what we can do now is to have the following WAF association with ALB. And in this case, this is what we call the rate base rule. All right. And with the rate base rule, what we can do is to specify, say, 100 all right, requests all right, per minute, all right, which is typical for a normal user. So in this case, if the request exceeds over 100 requests per minute, then we can begin blocking out all these bad IP addresses and be able to, say, stop the hacker on their track before they even reach over into your resources. And of course, you can see the second option in terms of IP address to use for rate limiting. So in this case, so in front of, say, the application load balancer, the one is interacting with your resources is a proxy server. And before the proxy server, there could be multiple devices before it. So as a result of that, you are probably trying to look out in the header if there are certain specific IP addresses, possibly bad IPs, that you want to block them out if they are contained within all right, the header. Now, moving back to the regular rule over here, we can see all these options, all the condition statements that we can use. All right? So in this case, we can match the following statement so I can easily do an inspection. So I can specify a country right where this specific request is originating from i can specify certain header certain query parameters all query parameters are coming in URI path and all of that so in this case say for example i specify header all right and under header in the header field i can enter say user agent and perhaps in this case it contains all right a sql injection and i can specify here contains sql injection attack because on the back end you are collecting all right, all this user agent information into a backend database for doing your data analytics, know your customer. All right, so in this case, we can see if the user agent contains SQL injection, we want to block those out the way. So you can see right here, we have the ability to do blocking all right, from the action over here. So once you're done with that, go ahead and click under Add Rule. So this would add it over into the list of rules within the web access control list. Okay, so once you're done with that, you can easily specify SQL I user agent, and we can easily move this up over here into the block. And once we have this, I can click on to save. So this will save the rule over into a web access control list. And the final part of all is under rule groups. So a lot of times you may have multiple web access control lists. And from a multiple web access control list, you want to create rules that can be reusable for multiple of this web ACL. All right. So in this case, all right, you have to go over to the left side and then you have to select under rule groups to create all these rules. And once you create all these rules, it will then be made accessible to different of these web access controllers. Say, for example, you're creating the SQL I injection check for user agent, and it's going to be used in multiple of your applications, in multiple of the web access controllers. So instead of having to recreate them into every of these web ACL, you can easily create them under the rule groups. All right? So you can say, for example, SQL I user agent under your rule groups. Okay, And then it will also create a CloudWatch metric name for us. Click onto next. And then after which you can easily add the rule, exactly the rule that we have created earlier. And then after which this is going to be made reusable. All right, that you can then be associated with many of these web access controllers, use them as part of the rules. Additionally, jumping back to the SQL I user agent that we've created as part of the web access control list, 
what I can do is I can add data on this. And right at the bottom, you can see the following. We have a custom response. All right, so we can enable a custom response to give a feedback all right, to the requester about what is the response that we want to give as a result of block. So in this case, we can say give a full tree as the response code. And then after which, we can specify a response body. So we can create a response body. And in this case, I can say block SQL I. All right, so in this case, I can enter, say, a plain text. Stop trying to hack hacker loy okay so once i have this i can click on the save okay and then i can click save rule all right so this will help us save the rule over into the web access control list so then of course we can again see the rule priority and all of that so now we have done with the setup of the rules all right what we want to do is to look at the associated aws resources so in this case i have the following all right application load balancer so this is the resource type of alb and we have already associated with the WEF rules. Now, before we jump into the penetration testing example of how we can test out all these different type of WEF rules, what you want to watch out for over here is I have an EC2 instance, and of course I have a public IPv4 address, as well as public IPv4 DNS. So if I go ahead and open up this address, and if I copy this, I open up the address by going into HTTP for this, and I hit enter on that, it will bring us over directly into the server. It means that, we did not go through the WAF rules at all. We did not go through the application load balancer. So we're going accessing directly into the virtual server. And that's not a good practice because you want all of this to be routed through the WAF in terms of protection. So what you want to do as a pro tip here is you want to go back over to the instance and you want to click on the security and you want to select under the security groups. All right, so go ahead and click on it. So once you clicked on it, you want to click under the edit inbound rules, select on it. And you can see right here we have HTTP, and then, of course, we are allowing, all right, internet accessible. All right, so what you want to do is to delete this, jump back over to the add rule, all right, specify HTTP. And then in this case, right on the source, you want to specify and target the security group for the application load balancer. So I'm selecting it over here, all right, else if you see over here, right, this is the EC2 address. So we're accessing it directly into the virtual server which is not what we want because it bypasses the WAF rule. So once I'm done with this, I click under Save Rules. And then, of course, the stateful firewall, it will kick into effect. All right, and then, of course, if I jump over into the EC2 DNS, I do a refresh, it's no longer working now. All right, so users have to go to our ALB DNS in order to be able to access into the resource. And now if I jump over into the application load balance, so you can see right here, we have a DNS name right here, okay? So this is the DNS to access into, all right? So what we can do now is I can go ahead, all right, and copy over into this DNS. I jump over into another tab, all right? So I've already pasted it over here. So I paste it and I hit enter again. This is the place for us to access into the resource. All right, so it goes through application load balancer, which is associated with AWS WAF to kickstart all of these inspection rules, condition statements, and all these checks against application risks and all these malicious payloads are coming in to our server. So I'm jumping over into my Kali Linux ethical hacking and penetration testing box. So right here, we are on the ALB DNS name. So from here, what we can do is we can enter anything that we want in terms of the search view. I can enter ASD, I can click search. And what I can do from the top right corner, I can select Burp Suite as our proxy. Once you select a Burp Suite as a proxy, you can go ahead and open it up using terminal. And then I can enter Burp Suite right now. So this is starting up Burp Suite for us. So this will be the place for us to run right all of these different types of payloads or in targeting over into the server. All right, so in this case, so if you jump over into proxy tab of Burp Suite, or right, ensure the intercept is on. And from here, we can go ahead and enter another result, say entering ASD, I click search on this, and we can see we are intercepting, all right, the request so that we can change up the request. And I can do a right click, I can send over into say, in this case, repeater, and this is the place where we can modify the request. So we jump back over to AWS Web under the web access control list. You can see right here with a SQL I user agent block status 403 with a custom response. So this is the place we're going to target to test out whether this rule is working, all right, whether we are able to inspect on it. So if I jump back over to call Linux with this, what we can do now is to change up the user agent. All right, so I can put, say, for example, single code, all right or one equal one semicolon dash dash and let's go ahead and do a send and see what happens oh do you see this right here stop trying to hack hacker loy 
you will notice that we have several options when it comes to the action to be taken as a result of either matching or not matching the rule. So what you can see here is we have the allow and block. So in terms of allow and block, this is what we call as the terminating rule. Right? So this terminating rules means that the moment the action is taken, it stops at the rule right there without going to the subsequent rules. And then for count, count is something we call non-terminating. So it will do a match condition check and then it will put it to count so that you can do analysis later on. And for the other hand, the final part is capture. Capture can be both non-terminating, right? At the same time, it can also be a terminating rule, all right? So you have the option available for capture on that. And just because you manage to pass the capture check, it doesn't mean that no more rules are going to be evaluated. If you pass the capture, further rules are going to be evaluated against the human actor. So in terms of the rule evaluation logic, you can see as the follow. The SQL injection is first checked on the user agent. And if it matches, it immediately does a block. And of course, corresponding with a custom response over here, which is status for all three, block SQL I. So we saw this in the demonstration. If it doesn't match, then what happens? It goes in a good IP. So if it belongs in the good IP, there's an allow immediately. And then when with the allow, the request is forwarded over into the resource without going into the further checks, all right? So this is how it looks like. So in this case, I have a login checker over here, which is targeted for any of these requests going into the login page of WordPress, okay? But it's not going to hit into this rule because the good IP has already been placed as the earlier priority. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this rule would look like in an actual request. So once again, I am back into Kotlin Linux, going into ALB DNS name. So all I got to do now is enter slash followed by WP dash login.php. I hit enter on this and you can see right here, we're forwarded directly over into the username and password for login field. So what I can do now to demonstrate it earlier is to go back over into AWS WAF. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and click under say login checker. All right, I can click under edit and say I look through all the rules. I can add in whatever you want to. And then what I do now, I click under safe rule and I go into the priority. And in the priority, I'm going to just move this up. All right, I'm going to move this up right before the SQL I user agent check. So I select under login checker. I move it up, up. I click save. And then with this, all right, the rule is going to propagate down into the associated resource so that we can begin the protection of it. Now, going back to Kotlin Linux, all I'm going to do now is enter slash wp dash login dot php. I hit enter on this and you can see, all right, a capture challenge is being prompted to us. Let's confirm you're human because of the logic that we have now changed in terms of the priority of the rules to be evaluated. And now you probably have another question and the question is about scaling. Now here's the problem statement. You have probably say three accounts and in the three accounts, you have multiple different type of resources like application load balancer, API gateway, CloudFront distribution, and the list goes on. And then the question is, how can you propagate certain rules and all of these different rules down to several of these different types of resources to begin the protection of them with AWS WAF? What you can do then is to use AWS Firewall Manager to help you push down all these different web access control lists and all of the rules down into the different accounts so that you can begin the protection of all these accounts and you'll be very quickly to be able to protect all of these accounts at scale. And once you do that, you have two options available. One is to directly remediate them, all right? Or two is to say that, hey, this resource is not compliant and I want to notify the account owner that, hey, you are having an incorrect rule and you need to be able to rectify that quickly so that you can protect your applications from, say, hacker law. So with that, you have learned something about cloud security on AWS WAF, and I hope it's been valuable and insightful for you. Of course, we can go significantly deeper than whatever I'm showing you right here. But this gives you an idea about how you can secure your applications on the cloud on AWS with AWS WAF.